Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I have played more than 300 hours Throne and Liberty on servers in Korea, so it's time for a full review of this game. Before we start, let me just say subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more of Throne and Liberty videos in the future. As you can see, I'm right here playing the game on servers in Korea. Check also my live streams on Twitch. I'm live streaming every evening about 6 p.m. Central European time. Basically, I'm playing the game every single day since December 7th, 2023, when this game was released in Korea. But now let's focus on review of this game. As you can see, I already level up two character, not one, two characters to maximum level 50 in the game. This is current maximum level in the game. And also I have one character level five. Probably I will delete this character. I will make another one because uh, also it's important to say when I'm already talking about deleting your character that when you are deleting your character, it takes three days to delete your character. It doesn't matter is your character level five or maximum level 50, which is not good. I think that is not a good idea. I do understand when your character would be level 50 and then you need three days to delete your character. However, for level five character, come on, to delete the character three days, that's a way too long time. Now let's jump into the game. Let's go on this character here. If you are wondering why did I create more than one character? Is it because maybe alts, playing on alts, have some benefits? No, that is not the situation in Throne and Liberty. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Currently, it's not useful to have alts in the game. The only reason I could create more than one character was to try different kind of combination of weapons. Because you probably know that if you are already following my YouTube channel. In Throne and Liberty, there are no classes in the game. Only roles exist. And basically, you are determining a role of your character by picking up a different kind of combination of weapons. So you can play DPS character, you can be healer, support, you can be ranged DPS, melee DPS, you can be a tank, but all depends on combination of weapons which you are choosing to play. As you can see, I'm already here in the game and let's uh, pick up uh, this table. You can see on this table, I have some things which I need to talk about. First, let's talk about leveling. Obviously, before leveling, you need to create your character in the game character creation of throne and liberty is really really good i will not go now into details of character creation of this game that will take too much time check dedicated video on my youtube channel i already made one video where i'm showing in details character creation of this game just to let you know shortly Character creation of Throne and Liberty is really amazing. You can create character really as you wish, right? Whatever you want to adjust. There are different kind of sliders in the game. So you will love it. Regarding leveling process, that is very important in Throne and Liberty. Uh, so they have changed a lot developers of this game, NCSoft, they have changed leveling process since at least of the game. It's much easier now to level up because I can show you here, for example, here on this part of user interface, you will see four types of different kind of quests. You will see purple quests. These quests are main storyline quests. And basically during leveling process, you are just following these quests. So regarding leveling, I would say a little bit too easy too easy. They need to make it a little bit more hard. Not too hard, don't get me wrong. We don't want to spend too much time during leveling. You want to jump in endgame. Nevertheless, it feels that leveling is currently too easy, too fast. So you need to follow this uh, main storyline quest, purple quest. Also, you can do this blue quest when you get stuck on certain level. If you don't have any purple quest, you need to do some blue quest. Blue quests are exploration quests, very nice and rewarding quests. And also you have here yellow quests. These are contract quests. You will do them also a lot. For release of the game on December 7th, 2023, these yellow quests during leveling didn't give any kind of experience. However, now three months after release of the game, they are giving lots of experience and very useful items. These green quests are actually guild quests. Guild system is very important in Throne and liberty so leveling like i said i think that developers of the game should make it a little bit more hard nevertheless it is what it is currently leveling you can go to maximum level that would be level 50 currently in the game for now for future updates probably we'll see increase of level cap for now level cap maximum level cap is 50 you can reach that within 30 hours 
all depends are you hardcore player or casual player how will you play but if you dedicate yourself to the game you can reach maybe between 25 30 hours you can already reach maximum level in the game of course if you are a casual player if you want to enjoy a little bit in exploring a beautiful open world around you then it will take much more hours for you and much more days and weeks to reach maximum level however it still feels a little bit too fast another thing which i want to talk about this evening are graphic design are graphics in this game graphic design obviously you can see that from the first moment when you log in into this game are one of the highlights of this game it doesn't matter is it regarding your character regarding your environment you can see here a little bit of environment in the game and don't forget i'm playing here on medium settings i'm not even on high settings there is a reason why I play on medium settings because I'm usually live streaming so it's very stressful for my PC to stream and to record videos. If you would play on high graphics, this graphic design would look even more better. So regarding graphic design, Throne and Liberty is one of the most beautiful MMORPGs I have ever played. If you like this kind of graphic design, you will enjoy in Throne and Liberty. Everything here from user interface, I can show you a little bit here how is looking user interface, just to get impression regarding graphic design. Look at this, right? This is looking so good. Regarding weapons, regarding UI in general, armor, graphic style of this game is something really extraordinary. Let's go further. Let's talk about combat of Throne and Liberty. One of the, I wouldn't say highlights of this game, because you need to understand something. If you were expecting to see in Throne and Liberty some kind of action combat like Black Desert Online, well, you are completely mistaken. When they would put that kind of combat in Throne and Liberty, big sieges wouldn't be possible. In Throne and Liberty, we have regarding content of the game, also big sieges, where we have more than 2,000 people at the same time playing the siege. So when you would have action combat of Black Desert Online included into this MMORPG, these sieges wouldn't be possible. Combat is still feeling really good under the fingers. It's fast-paced it's fluid nevertheless like i said forget about black desert online action kind of combat it's nothing like that you can choose between two different kind of play styles there is action combat if you press uh, v on your uh, keyboard you have this right this is action combat and you can switch to tab targeting where you use your mouse regarding content of this game pvp wise and pv wise there are so many things to say so it doesn't matter are you a pvp player or pve player you You'll find lots of things to play in Throne and Liberty. Regarding PvE, there are single player dungeons, I can show you here. Here they are. We have single player dungeons, solo dungeons, but also we have party dungeons. Not only that, we have lots of open world dungeons. Recently, developers of the game, they have added to the game very interesting in-game feature, where basically you are able to buy these contracts and weekly you can go in open world dungeons and grab really nice rewards like these bags these bags are giving lots of different kind of materials and very nice weapons and armor that's a story for another video check that video on my youtube channel however regarding content of the game pve wise there are many things to play and also during march we can get information from developers of this game ncsoft we are getting five new pve dungeons that is extraordinary regarding pvp content of the game there should be more things implemented into the game very soon we should get also two versus two and three versus three arenas and six versus six battleground imagine that that is the content which this game really needs regarding pvp However, don't worry, you can already do some PvP now. There is a guild versus guild PvP, you can go in massive, big sieges, and also during night, you can PvP in open world dungeons. So, it's not like there is no PvP currently in the game, nevertheless, in the future, regarding PvP and PvE content, yes, developers of the game, they have said they will implement much more in-game features, so end-game content will be even more rich than currently it is in the game, right? So regarding endgame, are there many things to do? There are, however, you still have that feeling. I have that feeling that developers of the game, they need to add more content to the game. Absolutely, they need to do that because uh, PvP-wise and PvE-wise, of course, this is one real MMORPG available on PC and PlayStation 5 and Xbox, no mobile devices. 
Usually, as in many other MMORPGs, what we want is more rich endgame content, and that will come in the future. Currently, the game endgame content, so-so. There are things to do, however, they need to add, especially regarding PvP, they need to add these arenas, and also, very important, connected to PvP and PvE in this game. They will add very, very soon cross-server matchmaking system in Throne and Liberty. Because currently in this game, you can find a party finder, this kind of UI, user interface, but this is actually not a real matchmaking system. This is just simple version of party finder. In the future, we will see implemented into this game, it's officially announced, cross-server matchmaking system. This game needs this desperately what do we have here next on the list to talk about let's check user interface gear skills regarding all of these things which i have mentioned here user interface you have already seen everything is done on a high quality way regarding gear system how to enchant your gear how to get your gear how to improve your gear regarding skills how to upgrade your skills Check some dedicated videos on my YouTube channel. I already have 150 videos regarding Throne and Liberty on my YouTube channel. When I would go now into details regarding upgrading your gear, skills, it would take probably two hours for this video. Just to let you know, that idea itself regarding upgrading your gear, skills, is very good. It's a very good idea, nothing wrong with that idea right in the game and requires not only, I mean, you can swipe your card, I'll talk a little bit later about pay to win, one of the big problems of this game, but not too big, don't worry, this game is much less pay to win than Lost Ark, if you know what I mean. However, I'll talk about pay to win a little bit later, uh, yes, you need to play the game. If you want to acquire best gear in the game, best in slot, best skills, let's say best upgraded version of your skills, you still need to play the game, especially regarding weapon mastery. Regarding Endgame of Throne and Liberty, I have already covered that, I have talked about that. So currently it doesn't feel uh, boring, there are things to do, however, you can still feel there are lots of things missing. And now we have here negative things to talk about a little bit, because I will not talk only positive things, absolutely, this is one review of the game to tell you what is happening in the game, 300 hours, I can play actually much more than 300 hours, but I can write here. 300 hours plus uh, to give you my uh, review of this game regarding negative situation what we have in the game so balance between weapons it's written here in this game you can choose between huge variety of different kind of weapons currently some weapons are feeling a little bit more powerful than others nevertheless we can see with every new patch note over there on service in korea check some dedicated videos on my youtube channel usually every tuesday in the evening i have thrown and liberty news video where i'm covering new updates what is happening on service in korea and that is very important because one day in the future whatever we see is happening here on service in korea we will get in global version of the game and within these updates weekly updates we can see that ncsoft developers of this game they're all the time trying to balance out that uh, that uh, power between the weapons right currently some weapons are feeling a little bit more powerful some not that much nevertheless they have done many improvements since the release of this game that was three months ago right over there on service in korea the developers of the game are still adjusting balance between weapons so it will be fine very very soon regarding that now one of the problems of this game obviously probably you know about that pay to win i can show you here auction house or marketplace here on marketplace right you can buy different kind of gear not only gear weapon armor accessories different kind of materials all of these items you can buy for this in-game currency called lucent sadly you can buy lucent with real money also there is indirect way not direct but indirect way to buy solant with real money so Pay to win is real in Throne and Liberty, nevertheless, it's not that bad. Why I say it's not that bad? Because gearing up your character is only half of the story, not even half of the story, it's only one third of the story. Beside gearing up your character, there is also power management regarding power of your character, there are also skills. You need to upgrade your skills and you need to work on your weapon mastery. These things, for these things, two things, you need to play the game. 
you cannot pay to win. Weapon mastery, you cannot pay to win at all. However, skills upgrading, you can, you can pay to win to some point. However, you cannot buy parchment for real money. Other things, other materials for upgrading your skills, you can buy for real money. So for everybody who is saying that Throne and Liberty is a pay to win game. Well, yes, it is pay to win game. However, it's not hard pay to win. It's nothing like, for example, Lost Ark or Black Desert Online. Nothing like that. It's much less pay to win than Lost Ark or Black Desert Online. To be clear on that. So pay to win is there. And will we see maybe some kind of improvements for global version of the game regarding pay to win to make it a little bit more mild even than it is currently in Korea? That remains to be seen. However, we already have official information from developers of this game that global version of the game will be exactly the same like Korean version of the game. So regarding business model, which is free to play, regarding in-game currencies, pay to win, don't expect to see too many changes regarding global version of this game and on the end the biggest problem of throne and liberty currently in the game i can tell you that for sure after more than 300 hours of playing this game are bots yes there are currently lots of bots in throne and liberty nevertheless developer of this game they are putting lots of efforts to ban bot accounts. I can see almost every day some kind of post from NCSoft regarding number of banned bot accounts. So there are still some bots in the game. It feels a little bit better situation regarding that. A little bit better. There is currently much less bots in the game than let's say one month ago, but they are still there in the game. Overall looking, like I said, there are many things to talk about in this game, which I would need to cover. The uh, guild system. Guild system is very important in Throne and Liberty. I would say even too much important. If you are not part of the guild, even some stronger guild, you are losing a lot in this game. Not in endgame only, even during leveling. Because there are many rewards, uh, guild skills, and this guild system is very very too much crucial even for throne anybody i think in the future developers of the game they need to add some content which you would be able to play and uh, not depending on the guild let's say that you're not part of the guild they need to work on that a little bit however this is mmorpg absolutely guild system is very important in throne and liberty crafting there are so many in-game systems in this game which i would need to cover right to talk about you have morph system Morph system is transformation which you have ability to transform into different kind of animals and with, it, with that transformation you are getting different kind of abilities. Amitois, these would be your little, uh, let's say pets on one way, which uh, they will follow you on battleground everywhere and they will basically heal you with uh, this uh, right uh, with, with their abilities then we have lithograph system there's so many system systems in this game right which like i said when i would want to talk about in details regarding everything here map i need to show you the map i need to show you the map map of this game is absolutely massive check this out this is a completely open world huge open world map without any kind of loading screens of throne and liberty and i can show you here this part of the map will be probably discovered right revealed with next big update when probably very very soon throne and liberty my uh, conclusion my review after more than 300 plus hours of playing this game on servers in korea is it good it's very good it's a very very good high quality AAA quality mmorpg are there some are there some things in the game which developers of the game still can fix adjust improve yes they are absolutely they can work on many things they can they still need to add cross server matchmaking system they still need to work on end game content they need to uh, they need to add more things to play pvp wise and pve wise regarding balance between weapons they need to adjust that also regarding tax caravan system that's a story for another video they need to adjust a little bit also that system in the game there are many things to work on however in generally without any doubt we are talking here about one triple a quality mmorpg which without any doubt once we get global release of this game will be the biggest mmorpg release of 2024 globally once we get it for now there is no any kind of release date when I'm making this video. However, when I see any kind of news regarding Throne and Liberty, regarding global version of the game, or something is happening over there on service in Korea, I will let you know about that instantly here on my YouTube channel. For this evening, just to share with you my impressions, 
after more than 300 hours of playing this game on service in Korea. Uh, conclusion, it's a very good game. Lots of fun to play, really good game. There is a lots of room for improvement. Nevertheless, overall, like a product, this is one real PC MMORPG, really enjoyable to play. And I have no doubt if you like to play real PC MMORPGs, you'll enjoy to play this game one day in the future, also on PlayStation 5 and Xbox, and of course on PC. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitch to see more of Throne and Liberty videos in the future. I'm live streaming every evening about 6 p.m. Central European time, so join me to see some gameplay and to find out what is happening in MMORPG and PC gaming world. See you soon.